It's all about the conversation. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. All right, let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 174 is with Aaron Mankey from 13 Days of Halloween. I'm well. How are you? Doing very well. You are the master of the lore, sir. I mean, wow. The last time we talked was a few years back, but that, I mean, I mean, that's that's where all your attention was at that point in time. Yeah, and and the lore podcast is still going strong. You know, like what seven and a half years uh, into that show right now, and uh, it's been really fun. But I've added some things to my plates. One of which is is this fun show. Oh yeah, thirteen days of Halloween. You're proving to you know to everybody that it's not just one day; it's a season. Absolutely. It should be right. I mean, I, I have friends who that they'll wear Halloween themed clothing every single day of the month. They, one of my friends also does it on any month with a 31st She'll wear <laughs> Halloween clothes on a, on the 31st. But uh, but yeah, we you know, the idea of this show is let's let's stay in the Halloween themed spirit as long as we can. Yeah. And, and a monster per episode. I mean, I mean, a monster a week and things like this. I mean, listeners really get into moments like this. This this to me is what it creates engagement. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every every episode is sort of encapsulated, you know, in the sense that you could listen and feel like you got a complete story. But at the same time, you're really aware that it's part of a larger ongoing story that takes all 13 episodes to play out. Um, but yeah, it does sort of have that monster of the week feel. Those are my favorite episodes of the X-Files growing up, right? The ones where yep. there's some mysterious creature in the sewers or whatever, and, and it's a one and done and you don't come back to it usually, but, uh, yeah, it's, th- these are fun. Now you're mentioning something in this podcast that I've never, that I've never really um, dealt with, but I mean, so I, I'm going to call you an early day pioneer on this is that what is the 3d Halloween? <laughs> well, th- so 3d audio is a, a way of recording sound that when somebody puts headphones in and listens to the audio back, it, wow. it doesn't have that sort of, um, you know, you throw on an album and you're typically just going to get music from everywhere in your yeah. ears. Yeah. With 3D audio, when you hear it play back, you actually can place the sounds in space to your left and right, in front and behind you. Um, and it, it, you can use it to some really eerie um, uh, moments in the show. That's that's very interesting because I mean that's one of the things that I like to do when I was the image director uh, for iHeart and that and that was the uh, um, to play with those speakers to, to you know so that somebody hears something in the back of the car it was it was placed there on purpose. Absolutely, I mean this this takes that left right slide um, and and takes it to a, a like a three dimensional level. Obviously, yeah. that's why they call it three D audio. But you, you've got to see the microphones that they record these things on. Just try a Google search sometime for three D audio microphones and the one that we use looks like a human ear like it's this really? big rubbery <laughs> plastic ear and I, I remember watching on the first season we did of this uh keegan michael key was our caretaker if you have if the character has a name he was you know l- moving you around through this giant haunted manor house and he on the zoom call because this was you know in the midst of covid would lean over this microphone and whisper things at it and then he would change his angle and come at it from a different direction and all those direction changes translate into the audio that gets recorded so you hear him moving around you when he's talking it's it's unbelievable for for this podcast 13 days of halloween what what when let's talk about the time because i mean it takes time to write it it takes time to get the actors ready and things like that so in 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 the process of creating it how long did it take uh it, it many 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 months i think that um so Alex Williams is one of our producers. He he brought the story to me and um, our other producer on the show, Matt Frederick, and the three of us kind of sat over Alex's like Google Doc full of um, images that gave you a, a, a comp for the, the look and feel of the show, even though it's an audio program, uh, descriptions of different places. And uh, we started hammering out. Uh, Alex wanted this journey of this boy named Max and his dog. No offense, the dog is named Arrow, and you're going to have to you're gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> but um, we, we didn't plan it for you, I, I promise. Oh, but, come on uh, now. We, come we, we on, Aaron. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say it's spelled slightly differently, so maybe that gets us off the hook. But, uh, but yeah, and then, you know, you have to hammer out the flow, figure out what are those 13 stops along the way, and then bring in people to write scripts for each of those 13 episodes. Oh, A lot wow. of the time an episode is – it's a rapper, you know, it's Max and his dog and Bezalel and who we could talk about later. They're, they're sort of like around the main content of the episode. 
but but you know uh, max is meeting somebody and they have a conversation and that conversation is is sometimes monologue like or sometimes you know multiple cast members and that's the meat of the episode that's what gives it that monster of the week feel in a lot of ways um and then once the scripts are done you know you do that typical thing where you you cast it like a tv show mm-hmm. right you go out to mm-hmm. a casting agency and find performers we have some great performers um and bring it to life with that and then some people record in a studio, you know, iHeart. iHeart has um, lots and lots of studios across the country. So that really helps us out um, as a place for people to come and record some audio. But but some people do it, you know, in their closet on a on a Zoom recorder, um, not Zoom, the video program, but Zoom, the, the audio uh, hardware. <clears throat> and then uh, it goes into post-production and we piece it all together and throw in that gorgeous 3D sound design. It's it's a huge process. Alex Williams, who sort of brainchilded this, he oversees a lot of the um, he, he, sort of the general contractor on site, making sure everything is built right. And uh, I'm there for creative notes and making sure things are, that they feel right. And, and I uh, just enjoy the ride. And it takes place 1930s depression. And it's, it's an era in Americana, in Americana that it's like, it's like, wow. I mean, it would take us back there. Let us feel it. Let us, let us live it and all that kind of stuff. Plus you got to remember back in those days, that was also the, you know, the days of when they were doing theater uh, with, with real instruments and stuff like that. And people were picking it up on the radio. Absolutely. Yeah. And I learned about this recently. Um, we featured it on another podcast of mine called cabinet of curiosities. Um, I don't know when this episode drops, but um, th- they used to do these things in theaters called spook nights. I don't know if you've ever heard of these, but like be- before an actual movie would play, and a lot of the time it was you know silent films. Before that, they would have performers come on stage and do magic tricks and things that t- I think to our modern eyes we would we would say ah I, I see right through that trick. But mm-hmm. back then it was it was new and fresh and frightening, and they would do things like have actors in costumes run around the audiences and scare people. And so the theater really was that place where people went to get freaked out. And yeah, uh, yeah so we're we're depression era for this story. Um, we've kind of gone Dust Bowl, so we head out Midwest. And you just get that feeling that everything is sort of dry and crunchy and dusty. And it's the end of the summer season. And, uh, and then, of course, they have this thing called Devil's Night, which was the, the way that they viewed Halloween at that point. And it was a night of chaos and just destruction and madness <laughs> now who did you envision max to be when when you were putting all this together I mean, because you know as writers and stuff like that and creative minds we always have this vision who is he what was he how old is he where does he travel who is his friend you know what i'm talking about yeah i mean max he, he's a, a 12 year old kid but he's got this really great uh, mature vision in his life you know his it's great depression era so a lot of families are losing their homes and his family has learned that the bank is going to take the house back. And he's he's doing that 12 year old kid with a lot of responsibility on his shoulders sort of thing where he's saying, I'm going to go out and I'm going to work and see if I can earn some money that will contribute to my family staying in the house. And so, you know, when episode one opens up, he's working on an orchard. He's working, picking apples for a, a crusty old farmer who's paying you know, a pittance, but, but he's, he's saving that money up. He's going there every day after school so that he can save up money. And that's sort of the kid that we envision him to be like, he's, he's not out on devil's night because he's out to cause trouble. He's, he's trapped out because he was out trying to do something good, but now he's got to get back through all this darkness to home. Yeah, one one of the things that I find fascinating with this because because I'm I'm a I'm a stickler when it comes to how long a podcast should be and stuff like that. And I mean, you are really shortened to the point with this, and I love that because most most cities and most places where people are, you know, it's a ten or a twenty minute town, and and so if you're doing a two hour podcast, it's like ah, they're not going to make it to the end. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I do think that sometimes when people sit down to make a podcast, no matter what the format is, whether it's a talk show like this or or it's a uh, you know, a, a product review or, or fiction or, or, you know, like Laura's narrative history, when you, when they make those, they sometimes think, well, it's going to be as long as it needs to be. But, but I don't think that that's true. I think that you need to think about your listener. Yep. And, and like you said, that 20 to 30 minute commutes, whether you're on the train or in the car, like that's a really sweet spot. The promo for it. I mean, I mean, listen, see, that's, I, I think the listeners, when they go to iHeart, should, should start at the promo and listen to it because it totally sets you up for what's what they're about to experience. So instead of just jumping into episode number one, they got to go to the promo. And, you know, really, you know, to me, it's like it's like reading the back of a book. And, you know, I'm OK. This book has, has my attention. OK, now I'm going to read it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the trailer or the promo for it does a really good job of 
kind of bringing in all the different voices you're going to hear mm-hmm. and ramping up the tension and uh, and it lets you int- you know get introduced to the 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 main cast members that we have. Yeah, and, and you know, that's where I found out about Keegan Michael is that, that you know that he was going to be a part of it. And I'm going, oh my god! I mean, you know, Aaron isn't messing around with this one. Well, you know, no, and this has been a great way for us to kind of flex our muscles as a production company. Um, Keegan Michael Key was the star of season one. Uh, season two, we had Kathy and Jimmy uh, from Hocus Pocus, mm-hmm. both one and two, um, along with uh, another great actress, Bethany Ann Lind. Um, and then this season, our main sort of, if you want to think of like uh, well-known star is Clancy Brown. So if you've seen Shawshank Redemption and you know the prison guard, Captain Hadley, mm-hmm. then you know who uh, wow. Clancy Brown is. You know, big, imposing, that booming voice. Um, he was also, if if you are a fan of 80s movies like me, he was the, the original bad guy in the first Highlander movie. Um, you know, with the shaved head and the, uh, yeah, he's just freaky. He's the guy that said better to burn out than fade away, I think. But he's got a great voice. He has over the years voiced um, a character for SpongeBob SquarePants, but he's done, you know, Star Wars cartoons and all sorts of other great stuff. He has a really good voice for audio. I mean, he's great on screen, but but when you hear him in audio, oh, my God, he's built for this. <laughs> um and then, and then Max, who we've talked about a lot, Max is a 12-year-old boy, so he is played by a young guy named uh, Carter Rockwood. Uh, he's a new good, uh, a newcomer, but he's he's just so, so good at delivering a, a stunning performance for this. You really get the feel uh, with him through this. So th- that's, our main, that's our main cast. The podcast we're talking about is 13 Days of Halloween. Do you have to do a focus group before you release something like this? I mean, just to find out if, you know, if it has the <laughs> attention? Because, I mean, you know, I mean, so many, you, know, you know how podcasts are these days. There's so many people doing them. Yeah. And, and do they put the thought into it? Do they, do they sit down and follow the formatics and things like that? Did you have to go, think, go through anything like that? No. You know, one of the reasons, and this is going to sound super egotistical and you'll have to forgive me, but I think that one of the reasons iHeart works with me is that I'm sort of like a one man focus group. Yep. So yep. Um, if I like it and I think it's got legs, like that's, that's, that's enough. And we run with it. And, you know, Alex brought the idea to me and, and said, um, the, you know, Dust Bowl era, Devil's Night, you know, we do a Google search for like depression era Halloween costumes and that's enough right there to scare you oh, and uh, building a whole show around that idea is just really fun. Wow. And you know, and you know, it's really interesting about this, you know, you talk about the Dust Bowl and everything like that, but you know, with, with the way that history has been playing itself out even today, uh, 1930s, that wasn't too far from that first pandemic, dude. I mean, I mean, they, the mindset of people even yeah. then, I mean, I mean, it's like, I mean, they, they had to have had a PTSD from that pandemic. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we, what, we came out of a massive, you know, world war. We went yes. right into a, uh, an influenza outbreak over th- that killed m- millions and millions of people around the world. Um, and, and then, yeah. And then an economic <laughs> downturn would be, um, uh, putting it lightly. It was a rough generation. It really was. So what, if you would not have discovered, you know, podcasting with lore and all that kind of stuff, what, what would you be doing? Well, when I kicked off lore seven and a half years ago, I was a graphic designer. I was, I mean, I was writing as a hobby in my spare time, but, but I was, I was designing logos and stuff. I, I, I actually had designed some podcast cover art yeah. that had been my, my foray into the industry. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I would like to think I would be writing at this point, probably not, you know, in podcasting, but it all, it all worked out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's, it's one of the things you and I have both been in this, the podcasting industry where people thought, Oh, is that your hobby? And it's, and it's really grown into something now that it, no, it's more than a hobby. It's, it's a production. It is, it is something that is reaching people and you, and you continue to grow with it, dude. Oh, you know, I think that it's really easy to hear a, a podcast where people talk to each other and say, anyone can do that. And that's why I think most podcasts are just a couple of people talking. Mm-hmm. When you listen to a show like 13 days of Halloween, I, I hope it's clear how much work goes into it and how difficult it is to make something like this. And uh, it just every all the sounds going on, all the different stuff. And then when you learn about the scripting process, the casting, it, it's, it really is like building a TV show yep. without the visual element. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because I I was that kid that would sit there at eleven o'clock at night and listen to Radio Mystery Theater. So when I hear things like this, I mean, it, God, my you're, you're taking me back, dude. Yeah, absolutely, and and I think that's great. I mean, people are they're spending less and less time looking at a screen because they're commuting or they're out exercising or whatever it is. I mean, I you know, I'm constantly listening to audiobooks. So I I think that this is the this is the next place for podcasting. I mean, it, it's been here for, for years. There's always been audio fiction podcasts, but 
you know, I, I make a ton of them. I, we've got Bridgewater season two coming out in January, Bridgewater season one, one iHeart's best fiction podcast um, award. And, and then I've got two others that are in kind of the scripting casting phase. And we're talking like full, you know, 12 episodes, full cast. Um, Bridgewater stars Misha Collins from Supernatural. Um, uh, and it's just been, it's, it's been a blast making these things. I, I, I want to give people great entertainment for their ears. See, I, I love your attitude. I love that. You know, and, and you, it has been all about people, this conversation. And I like that because so many people want to make it about mm-hmm. them. And, and it really is. It's about that other person. It's like when, when I'm, when I'm teaching podcasting and stuff like that with students, they'll sit there and go, I don't want to do it by myself. I said, you're not by yourself. You have a listener. You're not, you're not doing it. You got, yeah. you got to find out who they are and then, and then bring the conversation. Absolutely. And, and, and keeping the listener as this kind of spectral thing in your mind, like it goes everywhere with me. So it, not just when I'm writing, like when I'm writing, I'm reading the words out loud as I type them, mm-hmm. thinking about talking to somebody across the table from me. Um, but when I have, you know, a business meeting with an ad sales partner, I'm, I'm thinking of the listener when I make decisions in that department, because at the end of the day, somebody's just going to tap play on their phone and listen to this thing. And what's that experience going to be like for them? And it has to be about the listener. Wow. I, I love your attitude. Well, the first time I talked with you, we were doing the show from a bowling alley. <laughs> the second time we're sitting here in a beautiful state park overlooking the gorgeous colors of Carolina, dude. It's modern day technology. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, it. You, I love it. Aaron, you got to come back to the show anytime in the future. And I'm going to say that the reason why you named your dog Arrow is because of me, because of our conversation a few years ago. And you were inspired by that. So <laughs> <laughs> take the credit, man. Take the credit. I am. I'm taking it all the way, man. I'm going to see that Aaron guy, man. He, we're, we're, we're tight. <laughs> we're tight. We're tight. Dude, come back to the show anytime uh, in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I'd love to. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Will you be brilliant today, okay? I will. You as well. You bet. Thank you, sir.